So yesterday I went to go pick this up. Uh, it's a mini bike, and I got it for a hundred bucks on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, the only thing the owner said was that it doesn't run, probably because the battery's bad. Um, but yeah, the the tires hold air. Everything looks pretty clean. There's no scratches on the back from accidents and wheelies. So yeah, this is a uh, similar to the Coleman bikes, uh, but the Coleman's come with a gas engine, and this is already electric. It's a Monster Moto. 1000. I looked it up on Google and I found some listings for this. Uh, basically, it looks to be a discontinued bike. Um, but yeah, it has a 1000 watt motor, rear disc brake, no front brake, and uh, chain driven. The rear sprocket is massive on this thing, at least compared to Razor scooters. And yeah, overall this thing is pretty good condition it looks like. The only complaint I had and I noticed was that this frame isn't the sturdiest. So when I was sitting on here and I was putting weight on the peg here, I could see that the frame looks like it flexes left and right as you put weight onto it. But you have a chain tensioner over here and it doesn't have a spring-loaded tensioner. So I think if you were to want to make this a lot faster and need braking power, I would recommend doing some type of controller that has regenerative braking so that will help you stop without having to use too much of the rear brake because um, if you're into like vehicles you should know that front brake is where all the power comes from and the rear um, won't stop when you're going over 30 or so miles an hour or at least it won't get you won't get that much braking power um, so yeah we I uh, Try it turned on. I got it to kind of click a couple of times at the motor, but it didn't turn the motor. Nothing lights up. So I'm pretty sure the battery's dead. Uh, it's most likely a lead acid in here, because when we did lift the bike up to transport it, it was super heavy. So I'm guessing maybe this top row is all lead acid batteries, and maybe we need to work on the <coughs> power switch a little bit, because um, I had to hold it to get it to click. No lights turned on at all. But we'll see. We'll open this up, take a look at it, and then we'll probably try to just leave everything as is, aside from the battery, and we'll throw in a lithium battery. Uh, I'm assuming this is going to be 36 volts. If not, maybe 48, but we'll, we'll try it with 36 lithium, and then we'll throw 48 in there, see what kind of speeds we get, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go from there. So this is an aluminum cover. It looks like there's three screws here. Uh, I see the back of this one has a possibly 10 millimeter nut so I'll probably have to hold that while I loosen it and then these two top ones I assume they're gonna be threaded in. So. Okay, so you could see the back of this nut, but it looks like it's spot welded in place, so it's not moving anywhere. As aside from the the frame flexing, this looks like a pretty decent quality bike. I mean, they have they have uh, metal covers, which is pretty nice compared to razors, at least. Uh, so let's see, it's still kind of stuck in here. I don't know if it's clipped on somehow, but I don't see any other invisible screws. So maybe it just locks into place. Let's see if we could just wiggle it out here. Yeah, okay, so looks like they use some type of glue to hold this in. Um, Alright, so I'm going to guess, yeah, this whole top is going to be the battery most likely. And then I can see the controller right over here, and then obviously the motor's there. So, let's see how we get this battery out now. Okay, so it just slides right out. Um, it's a massive battery, so we'll save a lot of weight switching this to lithium. Uh, and I'm sure there's going to be a wire somewhere that's connected. Okay. 
so far. I don't see the connector, but let's see if we can wiggle this out some more. I have to move to the other side to get a better look at what's going on here. So I do feel like there is a plastic connector here. The only battle is how do you easily get to it. Alright, so I can pull out some a little bit more slack. Get in there just enough to unclip this. There you go. And then squeeze it through the cover there. So I use a two pin connector. This is similar to like the motor on Razor scooters. So maybe I'll I'll just rewire one of my lithium batteries to use this connector and then we'll we'll just connect it to the stock battery or stock controller. And yeah, this is a good maybe fifteen to twenty pounds of batteries in here so maybe I'm guessing it might be 48 volt So it's 36 volts. I mean, this is pretty nicely built. It has foam in here to keep the batteries in place. Uh, everything's metal here. I think what I'm going to do is I'll probably keep this case and then I'll just drop in one of my lithium batteries, fill it with foam, keep it from moving, put and then put it back into the housing here. But let's grab a, a battery. And then we'll uh, wire it up and see how this powers on. So here I have two 36 volt batteries uh, wired up together and then we'll just throw in this connector here and pretty much this converts it to the same plug that's on there. So we're going to XT60 to the 2 pin. And then we'll just throw this cover back on. Here, if you want to add the same batteries that we just did uh, into your Monster Moto, uh, I'll add a link in the description for the the battery. Uh, we have both 36 and 48 volt options for this. And then you're just gonna have to add uh, add some foam padding to keep the the battery packs from moving around. But yeah, so we found that you could open the access cover for the front, and then you could easily reach the connector here. Um, so I have the access cover off now. Uh, I'll tighten this up, put it back in place, and then we'll connect it and see uh, if we get any power after that.
Okay, so now since that we have a lithium battery in there, which is a 36 volt lithium at full charge, it should be 42 volts. So we're gonna have to use a lithium charger. Um, so what I'm gonna do is, this is the original one. I'm gonna take the plug from the original one that goes into the controller to charge the battery, and then I'm gonna stick it onto the, the lithium charger that I have. So first I need to just check the polarity to figure out which one is positive and which one's negative. So I'm just gonna, I have this plugged in right now and I'm gonna use my multimeter to check. So there we go. The, there's a N here and that will be our positive. Yep. So this is our positive and then our negatives over on this side. So I'm gonna disconnect it, let the charger kind of discharge so all the power's out of it, and then I'll snip the wire. And then in the meantime, I will take my lithium battery charger with this end, and then I'll just snip it off. And just make sure that you don't have anything plugged in when you're working with this, otherwise you could cause a short and it won't be fun. And then what I could do is I'll use my multimeter again on the old charger just to double check and make sure that there's any more power in it. And it's showing zero, so we should be okay to snip this end now. There you go. So this will go in the trash. Now we have the wrong plug. So I wanted to check the polarity just in case the wiring wasn't red and black, which is not. So what I'm going to have to do is, um, I think blue is typically the ground, but we could always just check with our multimeter here. So I'm just going to stick one in into the N and then I'll tap the the back side here. Okay, so blue is our positive, and then brown will be the negative. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder this up, tape it, heat shrink it, and then uh, we'll plug it into the Monster Mini and give it a try. Or was it Monster Moto? All right, so the charger is currently on. Uh, we have our modified charging end here. And let's plug it in and hope for the best. There we go. Charger is red, so that means it's charging. And that's it. Give it a few hours until it's full. And we'll go give it a test drive. So here's a Monster Moto. I already rode it a little bit, so now I'm just gonna do a recording while I ride this time. What I notice is that when you turn the steering here, they kind of max out quite early. So then you do have to lean a lot more when you're turning on these. Um, the fat tires are super nice for 
riding off-road. Tons of traction, no issues at all with that. So we're only running a 36 volt with the pretty sure it's a thousand watt motor. Uh, it has good good torque for 36 volt, but you can definitely see that the the top speed maxes out pretty quick. Uh, I'm gonna estimate that this is going about 12 to 15 miles an hour. Uh, I didn't fully go through the whole bike before taking it out. I, the brakes feel fine, but I'm gonna have to check the chain tension because this is pretty loud overall. Uh, a lot louder than any of my other bikes. So I'm thinking the chain might be too tight. I don't know if you can hear it on your end. And then it has the uh, half throttle style your grip here, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, so I think if we end up keeping this longer, I'll probably switch it to a a full motorcycle style or e-bike style throttle. So you can just turn the whole thing rather than only using your index and your thumb to rotate. But yeah, overall, I think it's a pretty cool mini moto um, for the price range it's about $400 for a brand new one when they were selling uh, now they're discontinued so you won't be able to get one anymore but yeah if you could find one uh, on the used market for under $300 um, just get some 36 volt lithium at least and you got yourself a decent e-bike. I could say that the seat is wide and is far more comfortable than the Razer MX seats that's super narrow. Even with the CRF seat that you throw on there, still uncomfortable. So um, I'll give the, the Monster Moto the uh, thumbs up for the seat at least. I feel like I can ride this for at least a couple hours without feeling any soreness. The pegs are high enough to where my thighs are clearing the, the bend of the seat because I know on my Super 73 when I had a wide seat on there um, my thighs sagged over so it hit the crease of the seat and it wasn't comfortable after a couple hours of riding. 